Here we are back. Today we are going to do build update number one uh, with the 2021 Maverick X3 XRC RR. Um, so far, myself and a couple friends of mine, we cranked out, uh, knocking some of the parts and stuff out, and getting getting this thing put together so I can have it to rip probably right after Christmas. Uh, game plan is is to try and spend a week uh, week out traveling around and hitting some different parks. So uh, it's not 100% complete, but I am going to go over what's been done so far, and we're going to take a little trip. The uh, Maverick's going to get something a little extra to, to uh, give it a little more style, but I'll tell you guys about that soon enough here later in the episode. So here we go. now I do apologize I wasn't aware that it was gonna to storm today weather was gonna be as bad so I would have done this yesterday or the day before now we'll start from the front and work our way back um, on the front of the Maverick I haven't made any modifications yet there's stuff that is still to come um, let's see the windshield I have installed the brp power flip windshield this is the one that you get from factory uh, i left my intrusion bars in because i like them i like the styling of them i think it looks pretty cool adds to the aggressiveness so i did have to notch the windshield right here um, i did that with a rotary tool it actually worked out pretty good uh, you do have to trim the front plastic pieces here remind you that if you do order this Go ahead and get on their website and order the template or uh, print off the template because they don't provide you one with the package. Uh, also, notable mention, their instructions that they have on the website kind of sucks. Um, if you're pretty good with figuring stuff out, you might be all right with this. Um, assembling it, well, I was going to do an assembly video on all the parts and stuff that we we're doing on here, but... The way we were working and putting everything together, it just didn't seem feasible with time to try and control the camera and keep the wrenches turning, being on a time crunch, limited amount of time with uh, limited hands. Um, so like I said, uh, I had to notch this out and then I had to notch the front. I'm gonna go back over and clean this up and even it out because I had to just eyeball it. Um, when I get to the point, I'm going to clean that up and make it look a lot better. Uh, let's see. If you have a set, uh, extra set of hands, if you have a second person to help you uh, get this windshield installed, it will make life a lot easier. The way these brackets and the motors and stuff goes together. And then getting the windshield on and not scratching and destroying anything. If you have a second set of hands, it works out pretty good. Um, as far as the wiring and harness and hookup, I don't have everything completely wired in yet. As far as uh, coming in the future when I do some other lights and accessories and some other stuff that I got going on, I'm going to pull the trans tunnel out 
finished so i didn't want to pull the seats and the trans tunnel out yet until i was ready to do all those things at the same time so right now i've just got my harness and stuff ran to verify that the windshield works now <clears throat> something that i want to mention that i found out there is connector pins in here if you see the one right there that's red and white also the one on the opposing side of it these are the ones that i had a problem out of when i inserted this switch into this connector it started to push these pins back it wasn't going into the pins and it actually pushed them back just enough that when you hit the switch you were getting power to the switch but when you hit the switch the windshield wasn't going up so thanks to uh andy anderson with southeastern southeastern side by side he told me to double check and make sure that my pins was connected i took a flathead screwdriver pushed them in there felt them connect and was like oh man there's my problem so now everything works properly Pretty cool, I'm kinda enthused about this. I always thought that the BRP flip-up windshield was an excellent idea, in which it is. Uh, polycarbonate may present an issue. Um, supposedly these are supposed to be a hell of a lot more durable than the stuff that you would get from like Super ATV and stuff like that. I've had the Super ATV polycarbonate windshield scratched up like hell within the first day tried to do what they said as far as taking care of it had the hard coated the whole nine works wasn't supposed to have scratches on it and yeah i end up cutting it up and doing something myself anyways on to the next part installed if you follow me on instagram you've seen that i did here recently post a picture of the factory doors uh replaced them with the factory can am brp doors uh metal doors aluminum also got my PRP door bags installed. Uh, got, I actually got these on Black Friday and they were shipped reasonably fast. I got the upper installed and then the driver door. But anyways, so the install for these doors is, uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. It is kind of difficult. Um, you can do it by yourself uh, extra set of hands makes it helpful with lining up this and then the handles and stuff the way it all goes together like i said i was going to do a how-to on some of these things uh when we was putting it all together but uh it was going to take a lot longer to do that than it was you know just knocking these things out and i had two days to work on it and then have to get back to work for the next nine days before i could touch it again uh, the external handle from k and it's pretty cool i like that that's a cool feature i have some potentially going to have some cabin closures coming um when they come off back order ordered them in october and they told me i won't get them till february but anyways that will work great with the cabin closures when we're in crappy weather um southeastern side by side frame sliders if you've seen my other video for this one i was talking about the uh or the tree kickers uh, got these installed they're not bad on the xrc there is not a nipple right here a dimple that shows you you know hey this is where you're supposed to drill a hole they actually i don't know if i could be able to show you or not but if you look let's see here we go there where that bolt comes through the side they already have pre-cut template uh, circles so what i did was is finish cutting that circle out and that's this little guy right here uh finished cutting that out and ran me a drill bit from that side all the way out which poked my hole through here and then i knew where to take my uh hole saw so i wasn't just doing guesswork um there actually is a dimple on this part right here there's not right here so this one was kind of easy that one i wasn't worried as much about um not much to that you drill your three holes you get it through get it bolted to the frame uh on the xrc obviously 
you have the rock sliders and all that stuff has to come out. You have to drill the rivets, uh, Torx T30 bit to get all your pieces out. I really liked the look, the way that the uh, rock sliders was on there. I might try to figure out how to reinstall them just for the look. But you have, with the uh, southeastern side-by-side -side tree kickers, you have to remove that entire metal unit that comes out uh, that's all in behind that. So, moving on to the back, high lifter arms. So, if you've seen the other videos about replacing the trailing arms, um, I went with high lifter for this one. And as you can see, this major arch right here. Now this machine's not gonna be a garage queen. It's gonna get used, it's gonna get abused. Uh, you know, I bought it to do work and have fun. So the trailing arms, I uh, went ahead and upgraded them before I destroyed them. Uh, got a good price on these from Eric Brown at uh, EB Power Sports. He is a high lifter dealer, so he hooked me up. Connected to them also is a set of Walker Evans shocks. Caught these before they went out of stock. Apparently they're all on back order. But I went ahead and hooked up with some Walker Evans uh, from Rocky Mountain ATV. So we're going to try that out and see how that helps the machine react uh, as far as rock climbing. Um, let's see. Underneath the bed, we got a couple things. We had to pull the bed off. Uh, if you can see the charge tube, I put on the RPM Power Sports charge tubes. And let's see. Can you see up in there? Their blow off valve. So, from factory, this thing makes some pretty wicked turbo noises, but uh, it's the turbo flutter. So, to relieve the pressure to try and extend the life of the turbo, because this thing's going to see some high RPMs, some high power, you know, it's going to be getting it done. So, I want the, uh, I don't want any breakdowns, you know, like extend the life of it as much as I can. As far as the install on that, um, when they talk about a 20 minute install, I think they're lying. But to make life easier, we did pull the bed off um, because I also installed the catch can, the RPM catch can. But the tubing here and down here, pull this out. You can easily get to the where the throttle goes into the intake manifold and you get that piece of the charge tube out. The other side, I highly recommend just going ahead and taking the bed off. Um, make your life a little bit easier. Pretty straightforward once you can get in there and get to digging around because the factory charge tube has a plastic clamp on these that basically holds the wiring harness together. Uh, let's see if I can see it under here. So up in here, there would be a factory clamp that clamps the wiring harness and all that stuff together. Um, and connects it to the charge tube and I think there's another T30 No T27 Torx bit that holds all that together So instead of fighting yourself and everything and being frustrated just go ahead and take the bed All this off it takes you a matter of five minutes or less to get that bed off uh, If you loosen up your bolts over here and this can move back and forth and you can just slide your bed all right out so There's that and the RPM catch can that was a pretty simple, easy install. Uh, if you watch their videos on it, it tells you where to go and what to do. And it's pretty straightforward. It's a good addition. Um, you'll see all the details. If you know about a catch can, you know the reason that you need one. Moving to the back. This is the part that looks good. So, L&W Fab Radius Rods. These guys... I chose to go with them. They're a localer company to me. Um, billet aluminum. They are approximately, they was $200 cheaper. And this is not on a Black Friday sale. This was a regular sale. They were $200 cheaper than a CA, a CT. They have lifetime warranty. They have fixed joints. Or, well, they don't have adjustable ends on them, which I didn't want originally uh still don't want uh these these radius rods are they look beefy um the install of them is more difficult than normal 
And the reason why is, is if you can see these little spacers here, they got one here and one on the back. You've got spacers for every end of the radius rod. So it'd be here, here, and here, and also here, here, and here. Now, that's where a second set of hands comes in and it'd be a, it, it's, it's a pain to try and get them all lined up. So, also on the back, you know, you see a bumper. This one is the DMX Performance Bumper, or yeah, I think they're labeled as DMX Performance. Uh, they're based out of Texas. The connection of it is to the frame here. And then to your pull plate. This seems like a pretty solid unit here as far as if it could take an impact. Um, they have a couple more different options that's bigger than this one, kind of adds on to it. Um, some intricate designs that come up like over here and then back over here. I didn't feel like I needed all that. This is sufficient enough. The uh, reason why I wanted something like this is, as you can see, the gap between the bar and the tail light and the bed. Now, I have backed into the tree before backing out because, you know, dark, limited visibility. I busted some of the plastics and stuff on that one before I've replaced. Like the tail light section right here, it's pushed it enough to pop it and crack it. Um, being cold, that, that'll happen more often with your plastics. So, I wanted to try and avoid the damages. Uh, potentially if I get stuck in a spot and I have to back up or I can't see I can use this to fill out trees it's cheaper for me to hit this with some spray paint or fix it than it is for me to go through the pain and headache of replacing plastics so giving you a quick walk around um, as far as sounds and tunes um, got my new jbl audio soundbar hooked up i have the same one in the other maverick i uh, really dig this one uh, best soundbar overall as far as for off-roading that i've found uh, best bang for your buck i got it from uh, joe tyranny i think i pronounced that right from team fast um, he's up in a northern state uh, reasonable shipping super fast super cool dude to work with um, doesn't BS around. He'll message you right back as soon as he can and get you all taken care of. So, so far, this is the build update. Uh, everything that's happened so far, there is more to come. Uh, finding time and also waiting on some parts to come off back order. Don't, don't know when that's happening. But anyways, we're going to get this thing loaded up and we are going to take it to get the next step of the process taken care of. And here we are. So if you don't know who Finishing Touch uh, Detail and Paint Correction is, look them up on Facebook. I'll put a link below. We're here. The uh, Maverick is about to change gonna have a different look to it the next time you guys see it don't know who's gonna see it first don't know Facebook or Instagram or if you see it on YouTube not gonna tell you where it's gonna get posted first you're just gonna have to keep keep an eye out so this is the final walk around the final look um, before it gets some much needed attention next video I'll give you guys some details about uh, more in-depth details of what we've done and what we'll do. Thanks to this gentleman over here, David. Unprepared, catching him off guard. So, if you've got any input, want to tell everybody. He's got his own YouTube channel, too. Yeah, I don't have as much time to do that as you do, so I don't I haven't updated it in a while. I don't sleep. Yeah, so this is this is all going to be... Taylor's project. He's he's the rap guy. He's the vinyl guy. So I'm I'm pretty much the supervisor in this building. I don't know much to do about anything here. So we got Taylor. He's gonna get your graphics knocked out, and it's it's gonna look pretty wild. Yep. So on that note, until next time. <laughs>